Welcome to another edition of Confident Real Estate. I'm your host, JC. Do you need an LLC? Well, if you own commercial real estate, yes, you do. If you already invest in commercial real estate, then you probably have some LLCs. And we're going to play a little game here where I'm going to ask you to leave in the comment section down below the coolest name of an LLC that you own. I've seen some crazy ones over the years like people who name their LLCs after their cats and call it, you know, Garfield Investment, 123 Main Street, whatever. If you have a funny one, leave it in the comments down below. Now, in this video, I'm going to explain to you all the unbelievable advantages that an LLC can provide you with when you're investing, especially in the context of commercial real estate investing, but investing in general, whether you're investing in a business or some other asset that you're going to own, you should have an LLC. There are so many advantages, so let's cover the basics of them now. But before we do, you know what I'm gonna say. Hit that like button, and if for some reason you haven't yet subscribed, hit subscribe because you are missing out on a lot of great information, if I don't mind saying so myself. All right, let's get into why you probably need an LLC. The three basic advantages that we're going to touch on for why you need to own an asset in a corporate entity like an LLC are liability protection, first and foremost, asset separation, second, and third, the tax advantages, the many, many tax advantages. So let's break down each of those individually, starting with liability protection. When you own something in a LLC or other corporate entity, you don't own it individually, that entity owns it. And the benefit of that is that if, God forbid, there was some kind of incident where somebody got hurt or property was damaged and your insurance didn't cover the full extent of it, then the parties that are entitled to damages are going to look to come to you to make them whole. But you don't own the property. The LLC does, and that corporate veil protects you. They can only go after the assets the LLC owns, which is the property. So let's say you own a multifamily property, uh, you know, worth a half a million dollars. The person cannot go after you for more than the value of the property. And that would be a crazy situation in any case because you have insurance that will probably cover any damages. If as long as you didn't do something grossly negligent to cause the incident or the damages to the person or their property, your corporate veil is not going to be pierced. That's what they call it, piercing the corporate veil. You will have liability protection because if you have a net worth of, let's say, $10 million, that person who is seeking damages cannot come after you personally. They can only come after the the value of the asset. And if that asset, that uh, LLC only owns one asset being that multifamily house worth a half a million, then that's the cap on the damages that they could come after you for. Your insurance plus that half a million. But honestly, your insurance will more than likely cover it. But you could sleep well at night knowing your $10 million net worth is safe. Number two is Asset separation. And asset separation basically means that if you own 10 different properties, each of them is going to be owned in a separate LLC or corporate entity. And why would you do that? Why would you set up 10 separate LLCs for your 10 separate properties? Well, that goes back to what we just discussed in number one, liability protection, because you don't want somebody to sue you for a slip and fall incident in one of your properties and the entity that owns that property owns nine others. And therefore, if they are awarded, miraculously awarded damages in excess of your insurance policy, or God forbid your insurance policy lapsed and you forgot to renew it, so they can come after the entity itself that owns that property without any insurance coverage at all, well, then that entity owns 10 properties total. If you own each property in a separate entity, it's not a house of cards. Somebody cannot come after you for all of your properties on one course of action. They can only come after you based on the property that the incident occurred in. They cannot come after each of your entities that have nothing to do with that first property because you separated each of your properties into a separate LLC. 
So that asset separation becomes critical and it keeps your entire portfolio from crumbling like a house of cards. And lastly, the third thing is tax advantages. As a business owner who owns a piece of property, on top of the already tremendous advantages that real estate investing provides you with depreciation and all the things that I've covered in a prior video, which I'll leave a link to down below so you can check out if you missed it, there are tremendous tax advantages for you as a business owner. You can write off so many things that are associated with owning real estate as deductions. So basically your cash flow will be tax free between depreciation and all the advantages of owning a business, having a home office, buying, you know, envelopes and paper and printer ink for all the things that you do for notices and to send out invoices for rent and whatever else, even traveling back and forth to the property. If you own a vehicle under a separate LLC and you know, you're know you expensing gas and mileage under the vehicle, even if it's your own personal vehicle, you can deduct all those things as expenses because they're being put towards the business, the square footage of your home that you use for a home office, the taxes that you pay on your real estate, your home real estate, your primary residence. If you have a home office in that primary residence, the portion of square footage that you use for your home office, you can uh, uh, calculate how much your real estate taxes are attributable to that square footage and you can deduct that too. Tremendous advantages. That's what makes real estate investing so amazing because your cash flow will basically become tax free. Again, always talk to your accountant and make sure that you're all on the same page. But that is generally how it works. That is why real estate investing is so much more advantageous and has such great returns and wealth creation capabilities compared to all other investments like stocks. So now you're going to form an LLC. So where do you form it? Generally, you're going to form the LLC in whatever state the property that the LLC is going to own is located in. If you own property in Florida, set up a Florida LLC. If you live, let's say in New Jersey, well, then maybe you set up a parent company and each of your properties are owned under separate, what we call special purpose entity LLCs. Again, remember, if you have 10 properties, you're going to have 10 separate LLCs, one for each property. And maybe the cash flow comes through those 10 and carries up to a, a LLC that you own that basically runs everything for all your property. So all the cash flows up into that ownership LLC and maybe you make that in your home state or in the state of Delaware. Again, work it out with your accountant to see what's most tax advantageous for you. But in general, you're going to set up the LLC for each property in the state where the property is located. If you get to the point where you're doing big, big money deals, with commercial mortgage-backed securities that are being traded in what's called a real estate mor mortgage investment conduit, or REMIC for short, well, then you'll have to convert some of your LLCs into Delaware LLCs, but that's another video for another day. If you do want to learn about that, hit me up in the comments and I'll explain a little bit more about that to you on a totally separate level. And of course, if these are the kinds of things that interest you, hit that subscribe button because you are missing out if you haven't hit it yet. Okay, so that establishes where you set up your LLC. Next, we talk about how to maintain your LLC, which is extremely important. Be aware that every state is different as to how they handle the registration process for an LLC. But in most states, there's either an annual or biannual uh, certification process that they require just to make sure that the information they have on record for you is up to date, especially if you don't actually live in the state where the LLC has been set up. And in most states, if you don't live in that state, you're going to have to get what's called a registered agent. There are plenty of companies that will become your registered agent for a short fee. And all that means is that if someone sues you, again, in the example we used before, if you live in New Jersey, but the property is in the state of Florida and someone sues you in Florida, your registered agent can accept service of process for you for that lawsuit. And then they call you up in New Jersey and say, hey, you're getting sued down here in Florida. It's a small fee every year, but tons of companies will do registered agent services for you. Not something you need to worry about. But again, you do want to keep your LLC active and certified in each state, and they will alert you either by email or by regular mail. Each state is different as to how to handle it. 
but don't let your certification go by the wayside because then your LLC may not give you the liability protection you were counting on. And you don't want to find out about that when it's too late. Usually these annual biannual fees are nominal, less than $100, in some cases less than $10 a year. It's just a way for the state to keep their records clean and make some money off you. And then again, if you own the LLC by yourself, you could probably download a simple single member operating agreement, but you want to have an operating agreement in place that establishes that you are in fact the only owner of that LLC. Now, if you're going to have multiple members and investors in your LLC, it's you and a buddy or family members that are investing together in a property. It is a multi-member LLC operating agreement that you are going to have done. And in that case, I don't recommend that you just find some template online. I would highly recommend that you speak with an attorney to draft you something simple that meets the basic terms and understandings of everybody involved because it basically becomes a contract between you and your colleagues and family members who are investing together in the property. So if somebody unfortunately passes away or has a dispute or becomes seriously ill and can't make decisions on in behalf of the company and can't vote, how does that get handled? Well, the operating agreement will establish that so you don't have to hit the pause button on your investment without the ability to make decisions in a critical market while you hash it out in court. Your operating agreement will dictate how you handle those situations. So hire an attorney if you're a multi-member ownership LLC. Something to think about. So lastly, and probably most importantly, how do you set up the LLC? Well, there are plenty of services that will do it for you. And each state has different requirements. Like New York has a publishing requirement that's very unique and is really just a way to create some revenue for local newspapers. But just figure out what the process is for the state where you're gonna set up the LLC. And it's quite easy to do that. Either you can do it yourself by going to the local Secretary of State or Treasury Department website for the state that you wanna set up the LLC in. A simple Google search will direct you in the right way. Or go to one of those basic services like LegalZoom or Bloomberg, where they can pretty much set up any LLC for you. And you, know, you don't need the whole binder and all the packaging that they might put together with it. Just get the LLC set up. And as far as an operating agreement, if it's just you and a single member, get the template offline. But again, see an attorney if you have a unique situation. And if it's a multi-member, go see an attorney. And again, you can also go to an attorney off the bat who will set up the LLC for you and do your operating agreement. And they may do it as one price package altogether. And in the long run, that may save you. But it really is pretty easy to figure out how to set up an LLC in each different state and how to go about that process. So don't let those things hamper you. And the, the beauty of it is once you have an LLC and a good operating agreement set up, well, then you're in business and you can just repeat the process for each and every property you buy after that. It may cost you a little upfront on the first one, but going forward after that, you've got a foundation established and you can just build on it and grow that portfolio. As always, you know I appreciate you watching all the way to the end. I hope you found this informative. Again, if you've got a cool LLC name that you've heard in the past or something you're planning on setting up, keep it clean, but leave it down in the comments, please, and share with the rest of us. And of course, if you haven't yet hit that like button, smash it now and hit subscribe if you're not yet part of this confident real estate family. If you have questions or other things about LLCs that intrigue you or that you've been wondering about, hit me up in the comments below or hit that contact button on my homepage and drop me an email and let me know and I'll make a video about it or I'll just reach out to you directly and answer your basic questions. All right, I appreciate it. Until next time.